run. So uh, Casting Class, our social chair, wants to announce where to meet. Hi, everyone. Um, so we are meeting tomorrow to run for about five kilometers um, in Hyde Park. And don't be afraid, please come all. Uh, we're gonna run on the pace of the slowest, which is probably me, so no worries. Um, you're all welcome to join, and uh, well, I hope I see many of your faces tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank you, thanks, Kathleen. Um, so before we start the uh, first uh, oral session of the uh, conference, a quick announcement about posters. So every, uh, anyone who has a full day, you post uh, And before I hand over to our session chairs, uh, uh, Andy King and Clarissa Sanchez, who take over for this session. Um, a quick announcement to everyone who has a spotlight. So spotlights are these, get, get to the first spotlight. If you could all line up here, so we don't lose any time, because we have a tight schedule, and then you will just come up, do your three minutes, and then the next person comes, okay? Thanks, so this is starting the first session now, thank you. Okay, thank you for coming for the first session. The uh, first oral session is learning good representation and the first talk will be the recently award talk, uh, paper, Exploring Local Rotation Invariance in 3D CNNs uh, with a Steerable Filter, presented by Vincent Andrearchik. All right, so good morning everyone. I'm Vincent Andrachik. I'm a hospitalist of Geneva in Lausanne. And in this work, we explore the importance of uh, local rotation invariants, in, uh, in particular in 3D images and medical imaging. Uh, background on image operators, and then present what we mean by local rotation invariants. I will then talk about the invariances in classic uh, convolutional table with uh, two data set, one uh, synthetic uh, 3D texture, data set and pulmonary nodules classification of 3D scans. I will then present the results and conclude. So let's start with the background on image operators. So first of all, intensity features are insensitive to tissue morphology. So we have here two examples, uh, uh, two, Im two images that have the same distribution, although one image is very smooth and with smooth texture and the other one is very coarse. Um, uh, other measures of uh, local transition between pixels, so local patterns to discriminate these two images. So in this, uh, we consider a set of local images here, the border of the region and some texture inside uh, the region. So the respon the such response usually have the need of equivalence to translations, as in any computer vision, most computer vision tasks. And we usually do not need invariants to scaling and global rotations because of the control settings um, of the acquisition. But we also have in medical imaging often local structures that appear at various orientations. In this example, we have uh, collagen junctions in lung CT, which are these T or Y patterns that occur at different positions and at different orientations. But we would like to detect all of these patterns regardless of their orientation. So we have the need for local rotation invariants. And here, uh, um, an, an illustration of, what, of this concept. So we have uh, uh, the global rotation equivalents. When we uh, rotate the entire image, we have the response that is rotated the same way. But when we have local rotations, in this case, these patterns are rotated locally, and uh, the response isn't changed when we have local rotation invariants. And this is what we will try to implement. So when we try to have, uh, when we look at rotation in local rotation environments with convolutional filters, so we have two filters, one that is isotropic and one that is uh, directional. And when we rotate uh, the image around a point x0, we see that uh, the, the isotropic filter is invariant, so it's locally rotation environment, but when we have a directional filter, it aligns or dis misaligns with the input, and so it's, it, it's not invariant. So what we say is that a, sim a simple convolutional uh, operator, a single operator, is locally rotation invariant only if the filter is isotropic. So it is insensitive to directions, and this is a problem since most um, we, we need to detect edges and, com and create uh, objects from this. So um, 
the question is, can we combine local rotation invariance with directional sensitivity? And the answer is yes, but we need slightly more complex operators. For example, we can align the directional, opera the directional operator, so we have the same operator here, but when we rotate the image, if we align the, the, the filter with the, with the image, we see that the response is unchanged. Okay, so now um, I will take a step back and talk about invariances in classic uh, convolutional networks, so not necessarily local uh, invariances. So the equivalence translation is built in uh, the, 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 the convolution operation. So we, if we translate the input image, the, the response is translated too. Now the invariance to global rotation is generally approximated via data augmentation in convolutional networks. So we generally input multiple versions of rotated uh, uh, training images and we try to learn the invariance. The problem is if we have few parameters uh, forcing this invariance, we'll deteriorate the directional sensitivity and the only way to learn this invariance would be to learn isotropic filters. If we have many parameters, they will, we will manage somehow to learn some invariance, but there will be a computational waste uh, to learn this invariance, and we will need a lot of training data, a lot of parameters to learn some filters that may be just replicated at different orientations. There's another method that is group equivalent CNN, uh, in which we can convolve the inputs with rotated versions of the same kernel, so we have a weight sharing over the orientations. Um, in 2D, we can convolve with right angle, right angle rotated kernels. In this case, we rotate the kernel four times and we rotate with all of them. In 3D, it's more complex. We have already 24 right-angle rotations. And in general, invariance to global rotations is obtained by uh, max pooling after the last convolutional layer. The drawbacks of this uh, approach are that is, it's designed only for right-angle rotations. Um, there's a large, mostly there's a large number of convolutions because we need to convolve with every rotated version. And it is also designed for global rotation invariance, not local. So as a summary, uh, there are other methods, but we have uh, the possibility to data, data augmentation, uh, group equivalent CNN by rotating the kernels, and what we will uh, propose is a locally rotation invariant CNN, and we will only convolve uh, the inputs with the basis filter, the spherical harmonics. We'll then steer the responses by a simple uh, linear combination that is fast and efficient, and we will use max pooling over the steered responses to obtain local rotation invariants and we can train into an as a standard scene. So we'll now talk about the methods, starting with the steerable filters and the spherical harmonics that we use. So a steerable filter is an orientation-selective convolutional kernel that can be expressed via a linear combination of basis filters. So in this example, we have two basis filters that are uh, derivative of uh, two D Gaussians, and from these two filters, by combining them, we can obtain the same filter at any orientation we want. So steerability has also been used uh, in the context of CNNs for global rotation invariants, mostly by Moise Weiler and his colleagues. And in this work, we'll construct 3D steerable filters in the span of spherical harmonics. And what are spherical harmonics? They form an autonormal basis on the, th on the sphere, and they can be interpreted as the extension of circular harmonics, so a, ba a Fourier basis on the sphere. The spherical harmonics are organized in subspaces uh, of degree n, so here we have the degree zero and, and higher degrees, and the degree is related with the, the angular frequency of the harmonics. And uh, so here we represent maximum degree two, and by combining these spherical harmonics, we can construct functions on the sphere. So we will use stable filters with a maximum degree n greater than, than zero of this form, and so we have this filter that is a combination of the, the spherical harmonics that are functioned on the sphere that will be fixed, we have the, the expansion coefficient, the C, that will be learned, uh, the radial profile, the H, that will be also learned, and that I use to, to, um, to project the, the function that is on the sphere onto a 3D volume for, for our 3D CNNs. So now with this basis, I will present the, the locally rotation invariant CNN. Uh, so what we do first is we convolve the input with the spherical harmonics, so the H, N, Y, N, M. And from this, we can uh, access the response to the filter F at any orientation R. And in this equation, we simply do a recombination of the, of the responses using a steering matrix DRN. And this is uh, fast and efficient. After this, we do a max pooling on the orientations uh, to obtain the local rotation invariance. And this is 
the operator that we define uh, at the beginning and using the, the, max, the, the maximum on the rotations, we obtain this local rotation invariants. After this, it is followed by a global uh, average pooling, especially, uh, and fully connected layers, and it is trained end-to-end -end, uh, as a normal CNN. The benefits of our approach, on top of being locally rotation invariant, is that we have a reduced number of trainable parameters. So we have only a 1D radial profile and scala uh, expansion coefficients. We also have a limited number of convolutions because we do not need to convolve with every rotated kernels, and we only convolve with a set of basis filters. And we can also obtain fi fine and fast rotation with this steering <laughs> property. So until now, we've defined it in the continuous domain, and how do we discretize? So first of all, we need to discretize the radial profile. So we use a, the voxelized version um, th that are the, these blue voxels here, and we, we interpolate um, a 3D volume from this 1D profile. And for, we also need to sample the rotations because uh, we, we want to evaluate to, to have a rotation invariants for a set of uh, rotations. And so we first sample on the sphere, uh, the first two Euler angles, and then uh, we uniformly sample the last angle of the 3D rotations uh, between 0 and 2 pi. For example, if we want the O group of 24 right angle rotations, we use six points on the, on the sphere and four points of the last uh, rotation angle. And we will evaluate uh, uh, different numbers of, of rotations. So now the experiment, starting with the, the data set. So we have a first um, sanity check experiment in which we, we create our own synthetic texture classification, 3D uh, volumes. So we randomly rotate some patterns, simple patterns that are lines and crosses, and we place them into 3D volumes. We have two classes that differ by the proportion of the patterns. And uh, it is a simple data set, yet some variability is introduced by the overlapping, the interpolation, and the varying densities. And this is just a 2D illustration of, of, the, of the data set that we create. After that, we have a real medical imaging data set with pulmonary nodal classification of uh, 3D CT scans. And we have a, a subsample of the NLST data set that was annotated. And we have uh, 485 pulmonary nodules that are balanced between benign and malignant nodules. And we use about 400 training and 100 test volumes. And these are 2D slices of the of the volumes that we use. So now I'll present the, the result, and I will start uh, with um, an evaluation of the parametric approximation capability of our uh, spherical harmonics uh, filters. So we will compare a standard 3D kernel, so it's normal 3D CNN, with a spherical harmonic parametric representation. So we will use our network with varying the, the maximum degrees, so the maximum angular frequency without using the steering property. So we will keep a single orientation, uh, m equals 1. And, and we, we compare these results, and we see that uh, when the maximum degree n is greater or equal to 2, we have the parametric representation that already outperforms the full kernel representation. And even with 10 times fewer parameters than the, than the standard CNN. So what this tells us is that maybe um, to learn some simple patterns, uh, and with few data, we may need fewer parameters and, and more structured parameters. And the spherical harmonic representation is a very good uh, approximation of 3D kernels for this. Uh, now we will use the, um, the, the, the steering property. So we, com we fix the maximum degree, so the maximum frequency to n equals 3. And we will uh, evaluate for various number of orientations. So we have on the x-axis the number of orientations that we use. And we compare it again to a standard 3D CNN. So on both data sets, we see that when we increase the number of orientations we use, we quickly outperform a standard 3D CNN, even when the 3D CNN, the top line here, is trained with data augmentation. Um, so on, on the medical data set, it, it shows us that some, some local patterns may, be, uh, may occur at different orientation, for instance, the, the, the border of the tumor or some local structure of the tissues uh, occur at different orientations, and, and our uh, built-in local orientation invariance in and is able to, to, to detect them. So I will now uh, conclude 
Um, so we developed a, a locally rotation invariant CNN using steerable filters. We have a drastic reduction of trainable parameters due to the weight sharing across orientations and the parametric representation of the filters. And we also have a reduction of uh, convolution operations because we do not need to convolve with rotated versions of the same kernel. We saw that data augmentation is not sufficient to, lo to learn the rot local rotation invariants. And we also showed the importance of the built-in local rotation invariants on a synthetic and real medical data set. As a future work, we want to uh, try to calculate invariants from the steered responses uh, instead, no, from the, from the spherical harmonic responses instead of having to steer for a potentially large set of orientations. Um, and we also want to apply our method for deep 3D segmentation. Uh, thank you. These are the references. I are there any questions from the audience? Yeah. Yes, can I? Hi, thank you very much. Will it work? Ah, thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, so you cited uh, two papers by Maurice Weiler and co-authors. One of them is 3D steerable CNNs. Uh, could you highlight for me the differences with that method? Is it just the fact that you do local pooling right after the... Uh... Uh, so th there is the, this idea of local rotation invariance, but that could also be done with 3D steerable filters. Uh, I think one main difference is the, the fact that we actually steer the filters uh, from what I understood, I think, from what I remember from the 3D steerable filters, uh, the steerable filters are used to have a, an equivariant representation throughout, throughout the network. But I think invariants are calculated from these responses and you don't steer uh, the, respond, the, the responses of the, the filters to, give, to a set of orientations. If I'm so, not so, so that method definitely is steerable. Um, but we, uh, we keep the equivariance yes. throughout the whole network. So I guess here you do the local pooling right after every layer to yes. make it locally invariant. I guess that's the difference. So did you, did you compare to that method maybe for the applications? If I, no, uh, there's no comparison with this. Uh, okay. that, that might be interesting. Thank you. Hi, it was a very nice paper, thank you. Are you aware of the paper by Eric Beckers, which he presented at Mikai last year? Uh, the title? It is not in your reference list. It's also about rotational variance using um, uh, a very similar setup, but in uh, uh, using um, a slightly different um, um, mathematical background. Is it a 2D serial filters? It is, um, yeah. Yes. It's not steerable filters. May I have the it is, is a Lee group based uh, approach. Okay, I'm not familiar with this paper. You're not familiar I, with it. Uh, I, I think I, the paper is at least as, uh, as um, um, let's say, um, promising as what you're presenting here. So comparison would have been nice. But if you haven't seen the paper, then that falls down. Uh, okay. Maybe in the references of the, of the paper, I'm not sure. Uh, and it's in, the, it's in the proceedings of MICAI 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm, I mean, in, in the paper itself, or, uh, it's not in these references, but I don't know if it is in the paper. Thank you. So, do you use uh, these steerable filters after every layer, or just the first layer in the network? Just in the first layer, because we, yeah, we do not propagate the equivalence system. Would it be possible to, um, to learn whether a feature should be a uh, rotational environment? Because I guess there's also features that uh, should not be a combination of both. Uh, it is definitely possible to have two branches there. But uh, I also guess if, if, if it is learned